All right, so let's look at the parts of the flower, whoops, and how that fits into uh, the, the, the life cycle. Uh, first of all, in the parts of the flower, we have what's called the stamens, which uh, have an, what are called anthers and filaments. The anthers are important because that's where spores are produced that develop into the so-called male gametophytes, which are essentially what we call pollen. Okay. Um, in addition, you have a structure which is oftentimes called a carpel. This is a sort of simplified view of plant structures, by the way. The carpel has three parts. A sticky part up here, which is called the stigma, and that's where the pollen has to adhere to during pollination. The style is just kind of a projection for the stigma. And then at the base of the flower, we have a structure which is called an ovary, inside of which are smaller structures which are called ovules. And it's in the ovule that the uh, spores that spores are produced that develop into the female gametophyte, and after fertilization, that's where the seeds are produced. All right, so we've, the important parts are, of course, the petals, right? And then we have the stamens consisting of the anther and the filament. The anther is where the pollen is produced. And then we have the carpal, sticky stigma. That's where the pollen sticks to during pollination, the style, and then the ovary. And inside the ovary, the ovules. All right, so now let's take a closer look at the life cycle of flowering plants. Now I'm going to start here with the sporophyte. And notice that in the anther, uh, you have spores produced that germinate and develop into pollen grains. A pollen grain is actually a multicellular gametophyte. It only has three or four cells, but it's still a gametophyte. And the pollen grains are haploid, of course. Uh, in the base of the flower, in the ovule, you have um, haploid spores produced that develop into a female gametophyte that produces the egg, and that's what they're showing here. After pollination, the pollen produces a pollen tube down which the sperm swim, so they don't require external water. Everything is internal to the flower. Uh, the sperm swim and pollinate the egg that's, or, not, or fertilize the egg, excuse me, that is in the, uh, uh, produced by the female gametophyte. And the result is a zygote. Now the zygote develops into a diploid sporophyte. In this case, it's still a little embryo, so if you ever cut open a bean seed, you might see that. Comes packaged with its own food supply, uh, which is actually a kind of complicated tissue, and we're not going to go into that here. Uh, and then that whole thing is surrounded by a seed coat. So you can kind of think of the seed as a baby plant along with its food. Now, the seeds develop, of course, in the ovary. And when the ovary is mature, that's what we call a fruit. And so here's a mature fruit with the seeds on the inside. And both the seeds and also the ovary oftentimes have specialized adaptations for dispersal. You know, in other words, now the seeds and the fruit are the main way that the plants get around. So my next slide shows a little mouse that's eating a little berry, basically a highly modified ovary. And, you know, when the mouse poops, the seeds are going to come out the other end. Okay, birds oftentimes do this as well. Um, Adaptations for pollination, here's a, uh, an orchid along with a, a bee feeding, uh, collecting nectar from the orchid, orchid. And you can see the, the anthers kind of reaching around and dusting the bee. And here's the stigma that's going to pick up pollen from the bee. Um, some plants are pollinated by birds, and you know you might be familiar with hummingbirds, for example, as a, as a pollinator. Uh, even more strangely, in the tropics, there's a whole series of bats called fruit bats, and they fly at night mainly. There's some that fly in the day, but I believe most of them fly at night. Bat-pollinated flowers usually have a flat surface with lots of uh, anthers and uh, and so they pr also produce lots of nectar, you know, bats requiring a lot of energy if they're going to pollinate 
pollinate the flower, they have to get something in return, and they get lots of rich nectar. All right, so this is just a quick look at plants in terms of the alternation of generations. Uh, realize that the alternation of generations life cycle is basic to all plants, and by the way, some green algae, um, but then plants also have modifications of that, the big one being the development of seeds in both gymnosperms and in the flowering plants. Okay, so this hopefully this helps you make some sense of what's going on with plants for the lab.